Well, let's talk water and power because they're both linked. Uh, you've been in favour of nuclear power in the past. There's a conversation now about biomass, about hydrogen. Uh, but none of it's possible unless you've got a water supply. What are you going to do about water? Oh, I think there's a couple of points to be made there. The, the, the first one is I support what works. Uh, if we want electricity generation in this country, which is affordable and reliable, uh, we need to be able to look at the options that work. Uh, now, small modular reactors have been included in the technology roadmap. Uh, I think that's a good thing. We should be able to investigate and have a conversation with the Australian people uh, over matters which are difficult. I mean, that's our job as, as politicians, to look to the national interest and what options are available. Uh, but in terms of water, uh, in my view, we need more dams. It's the reason why the Deputy Prime Minister does have the national water grid in the portfolio. The federal government has got billions of dollars available, uh, both as grants uh, and loans, uh, to build that water infrastructure. We know New South Wales is moving on. They've announced two dams uh, that they're ready to get going on. Uh, but in Queensland, we continue to be hamstrung uh, by Premier Palaszczuk and formerly by the Deputy Premier, uh, Jackie Trad, who's now no longer on the front bench. Uh, it's just time to get moving on these projects. We, we need to be able to provide that very scarce resource. If we want agriculture to be $100 billion in exports, well, we've got to get going on the infrastructure they need. And I mean, Keith, people, it's true, isn't it? Northern Australia is that key to our prosperity. If you think about our iron ore, you think about our coal, you think about uranium, you think about bauxite, you think about water. It's all north of the Capricorn, That's uh, the, Capric the, the Tropic of Capricorn. It's absolutely and critically important we invest in those sorts of regions. Oh, well, when you talk about somewhere like Babinda or Tully, they, they measure their rainfall in metres, uh, not inches or millimetres. So there's always substantial rain in the wet season uh, in the north in, in most, most years. Uh, but what we also know about the north is that they're made up of a whole stack of resilient people. Uh, it, it's another reason that the Coalition's put forward the Northern Australia agenda. Uh, it's why we have the Northern Australia Infrastructure Fund, which has still got $3 billion to deliver in loans for those projects that we need to get the economy going. But I think there's an opportunity here for the Australian people uh, post-corona. Uh, for those who are tired of being cramped up in the city and living in those multi-storey buildings on top of one another, if there's a job for you in regional Australia, well, go for it. You can have a house, you can have a backyard, you can have plenty of room, a motorbike, a cat, a dog and a couple of cars. Uh, very healthy living. Uh, as long as we can get you a job, well, I think the world's your oyster. So what's the plan? What are we going to do? Are we relying on government only to do this? I mean, surely the signal to the private sector is uh, the government is serious about this. But, I mean, you mentioned the Queensland government as one that is just not wanting to play ball, not wanting to get on with the business of building things. Uh, well, I, I come from business. I, I start as an apprentice sweeping the shop floor. Uh, I've run a small business with up to 15 staff and had farms and been in agriculture before I came to politics. Uh, I'm not a career politician, uh, and to me the fundamentals remain the same. We need our businesses to be competitive, uh, both domestically and internationally. Now, to do that, uh, you need affordable electricity, you need affordable gas, you need a workforce that is skilled and available, and you need to knock out the red and green tape that just seems to strangle projects in this country, uh, particularly those that attract uh, idealists who have a view that they don't want those projects to go ahead. Uh, the idea that they can have multiple federal court actions to try and hold up a project that just wants to drive thousands of jobs into our economy, uh, to me, doesn't make any sense. So I think they're the fundamentals that we need to target. Business will do what business does. Uh, they'll be efficient, competitive, practical. Uh, they'll, they'll build, they'll invest, they'll borrow. But it's all based on risk. And if they think they can be competitive, they'll get into it. So we do need to look at that infrastructure piece on behalf of the government. That is ensuring that we do have adequate gas supplies. That also adds into cheaper electricity. If we're building gas-powered uh, gas powered electricity generators and power stations, we need to maintain our baseload coal. Uh, that is critical, and a lot of the ones in Queensland are owned by the taxpayer. Why, why would you want to throw away their money? Uh, and certainly we need to maximise the life of those facilities. Well, baseload power from coal seems to be the most logical thing. I mean... Coal's the first four letters of the word coalition. You'd think the coalition government would be all in favour of coal, and yet we've heard, uh, we've heard hydrogen, we've heard biomass being proposed uh, as well. I mean, biomass, as I understand, you need about 10 of those for every coal-fired power station you knock off. Why is coal such a four-letter word? I mean, some of your colleagues don't seem to want to mention that word. Oh, I'll be very frank and very clear. I'm a great supporter of the coal industry. I'm the Minister for Resources. 
I think coal's a significant contributor to the, to the economy, not only in Queensland, but elsewhere. Uh, but the technology roadmap, now, it, it's semantics, but when you talk about thermal generation, you're talking about coal-fired plants and gas-fired plants. That, that's what it means. I think we just need to be a lot more practical in our language and make it very clear what it is that we are investigating in terms of the technology roadmap. Uh, and I'm sure Angus Taylor will continue to do a great job in that portfolio. But you need as many horses in the race as you can find. We shouldn't just knock out uh, one potential solution simply because it's a difficult discussion. Uh, carbon capture and storage has got a long way to go. Uh, it's another reason it's in the technology roadmap. Uh, and you can certainly utilise Healy coal-fired power plants with CCS, meet our targets and deliver reliable electricity. I mean, why bother staying in Paris if we're way ahead anyway on the targets that Paris set? I mean, that, that's what a lot of people say. But then equally, there's, there's blue tape, as Malcolm Roberts, the Queensland Senator, puts it. I, it's a great terminology. Blue tape, that's United Nations conspired rules uh, around our water usage. I mean, the Water Act that was introduced, and I voted for it when I was in Parliament in 2007. I would like to rescind my vote. Can you amend the Water Act? Can you review the Water Act so we can actually start to get water are a lot less commoditised and a lot more available where and when people need it. Oh, well, there's, there's a lot of things you can do, as you, as you know. Uh, if you control the Senate and you control the House of Representatives, well, uh, you can pretty much get anything through the Parliament. Uh, unfortunately, that is very rarely the case, and politics is the art of the achievable. Uh, now, as the Federal Water Minister, I've already given a commitment to the people in the Murray-Darling Basin in particular uh, that I'll come to this with an open mind and a clear-eyed view. Uh, I'm certainly looking at all of the reports that are landing on my desk and I've got to tell you, there are stacks of them. I have a wheelbarrow full of reports uh, coming through my door over coming weeks and months. The government will provide a considered uh, decision and position based on those recommendations and in consultation with the state ministers. You, you know how this works. Uh, the, the Commonwealth is one of uh, six equal shareholders in the Murray-Darling Basin Agreement and, and the Water Act. Uh, we need to be able to ensure that the states do their part, uh, and I certainly will continue to do that. Yeah, look, I, I, I'm happy enough that you're going to do that because, you know, you're a small business bloke and you've got that kind of uh, Queensland feel about you, which is really important, uh, Minister, and it's absolutely critical that you do because there is this... There is plenty of big business and people who have no real interest in the use of the water, they just want to make money out of it, involved in all of it. So it's a real mess to unravel this Water Act. Oh, well, in the Murray-Darling Basin, uh, the ACCC is currently doing uh, a report and inquiry uh, as directed by the Treasurer on the water trading system in that area. And now I expect to get some very strong recommendations out of that review. Uh, I've certainly listened to all of the individuals throughout the basin and, and their concerns. Uh, and we'll determine j just how serious and legitimate those concerns are before we act. But we, we've got to be considered in our approach. We need to come to it with a very calm and methodical approach because there's nothing you can do in the water space that doesn't affect someone else somewhere else. Uh, it's just like Newton's law. Uh, it's, it's very straightforward. So if you move in one direction, you've got a, ne a negative reaction in the other direction uh, and that becomes very challenging. We do need to get the states over the line we need to ensure that the basin plan in particular does what it was intended to do, uh, and that is maintain a healthy river system, uh, stop saline intrusion, salt intrusion into agricultural land, stop acid sulphate source, uh, and I think we are doing that. Uh, but the challenge is never ending.